Okay. Hold on, let me fix this. There you go. Um, so we talked about um, uh, we talked about um, how to detect wrong attitudes, motivations, actions, words, basically how God speaks to us. We talked about um, the basic purposes for authority. Okay, that takes us to the basic structures of authority. Um, first off is the government. Um, Romans 13, 1 through 7 makes it abundantly clear that we have no excuse to say, oh, I don't serve in military because um, it's against my religion. Well, Paul said that you should give what is due. Okay. Um, also, um, we need to be careful about um, finding reasons uh, to rebel. We need to be very careful about finding reasons to rebel. Um, are there some reasons to rebel? Yes, absolutely. There, there, there may be some reasons to rebel, rebel but the, the majority of the time, times we, we don't um, have a sufficient reason as to why we rebel. And also, we need to establish um, in rebellion, are we defending the rights of others? Or are we um, um, standing up for, for, for a right that maybe is not necessary? Uh, for instance, if you are a Christian, Christians have not always had the right of free of, of, of speech. So I mean, um, and and what I'm really getting at is is we need to make sure that we don't create excuses as to why to rebel. Um, um, second uh, Peter, uh, Second Peter two three thirteen through four two thirteen through fourteen also says um, some some about this. Um, but uh, Romans 13 definitely does make it clear that that authority the, the authority is from God and God uh, God put it there. Some people would obviously say, "Oh, I, I don't I don't submit to human authority. I submit to God's authority." Well, I mean that's all good and well, except that for that God established that authority. Um, uh, and oftentimes the things that I see people rebel about uh, are non-issues. Like for instance, um, and, and also causes um, causes our witness to be harmed. See, so like for instance, the the thing with the Confederate flag in 2015, um, you know, Christians throwing a fit about that and caused um, a wall to be put up between them and the world. Um, the thing with homosexuals, where they where they protested in a way that that um, that really hurt the church, the witness of the church. So, do we need to stand up for truth? Yes, we need to stand up for truth. Do we need to stand up for rights? Yes, we need to stand up for rights. Um, but we also need to do do it in a, in a good way, okay? I, I, we Christians should never be pacifistic. We shouldn't be pacifists. They just separate ourselves and, and let the world deal with itself. But we also shouldn't be rebels who constantly stir up problems, okay? Um, we shouldn't go to either extreme. Um, we should pray for the pray for people, pray for those in authority. We should vote and do whatever we can. Um, we maybe in some cases peaceful protests are, are, are a good thing, but in a lot of cases they're not. Um, we should stand up for the weak. We should stand up for those kinds of people. We should run for office. Uh, you know, Christians aren't just called to sit in, inside the, the, the building. They're called to, um, to to make an impact in the world wherever they're called to. You know, some people have a natural calling and passion to be a police officer. Um, some people um, are, feel like the Lord is calling them there, but they don't really have, necessarily have a talent there. Um, some people um, are empowered by the Lord to do certain things. I mean, really, whatever God calls you to, he'll lead you to. Find out where your, pa where your passion is. Find out where you think God's leading you to. Pray about it. Ask people. Ask authority. Um, but there's a lot of ways that we can make a, make a difference in, in the government besides rebellion. Um, another way is uh, child ministry. If you want to change the world of tomorrow, reach out to kids. You know, we have a lot of kids in foster in foster care. We have a lot of kids with with druggy parents. We have a lot of kids, you know, who have no model by their parents. Does that make sense? And so we need to establish truth. We need to be there for those kids, and in so doing, we'll, we will change the nation. Um, another thing is is we need to stop arguing about things that that have no preference, and we need to stop. Excuse me. Stop mentioning things from the altar. I mean, from the podium. They have nothing to do with um, with with God or His law. Okay. Like, let's consider the pastor who who starts going off about President Obama this, or you know, he doesn't even call him President Obama. Just says Obama this, Obama that. Be very careful with this kind of stuff. Um, we have a re very rebellious heart, and we're looking for reasons to rebel. And remember, things are always better in hindsight. Oh, for instance, I hear some people say how. Uh, President Reagan was the greatest thing in the world. Um, some people are convinced that President um, Lincoln was, it was the greatest thing in the world. Some people are convinced that Washington was the greatest. President Washington was the greatest thing in the world. 
So, I mean, there's always reasons that people are fighting to rebel. And what we need to do is find reasons to make peace. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, this is this is linked with pride whenever we, re we rebel. But um, the problem is, is that we're Christians um, are finding a reason to rebel. And we're not being... Um, an equal voice, okay? For instance, uh, how many times have you heard a Christian talk about the, the, the baby in an abortion, but never talk about the mom? See what I mean? We need to stand up for both people. We need to stand up for what's right and what's good for both. See what I mean? We don't have to pick sides, but we need to be just. We need to be, um, we need to remember that, that, um, well, and then also, another thing, just a little bit, is, is we need to make sure that we're there for those people who choose not to have an abortion. Financially speaking, yes. Um, maybe uh, an adoption, maybe. You know, do what you can to impact the kids that you can impact. I know sometimes people get really caught up in abortion, like this thing with Planned Parenthood, just tragic, tragic stuff. But then they don't do anything to fix it. They just sit and complain about everything. What about those kids in the in the foster care system who don't have any, anywhere to live? What about them? Who's going to watch out for them? What about those kids who weren't aborted and the parents are struggling to make ends meet and they need government assistance or somebody's assistance? What about them? So, I mean, we need to stand up for people. We need to stand up for what's right. And we do need to, to, to change things that are there in the government and whatnot, but do so in a peaceful way. Um, <clears throat> and so is there any reason for outright, outright, outright rebellion? In some cases, yes, but we need to be very extremely careful. Um, King Solomon did something that was evil for the Lord, evil to the Lord, and so as a result, he caused a rebellion, told someone to rebel against King Solomon's son, um, and uh, separated the, the kingdom into north and south, the Israel and Judah. Um, Rehoboam was 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 um, the kingdom was united, was divided under King Rehoboam, who was King Solomon's son. Um, so obviously, we see that sometimes. Rebellion is a thing. However, the problem is that we oftentimes get caught up into the culture of our country instead of God, what God wants. And um, so there's really no set rule per se as maybe um, um, applying things to specific situations. Um, and it's really hard to say more than that, especially in a broad sense. Um, but uh, we need to do what we can um, with what we can. Um, second area of, of basic structure authority is, is business. If you read Ephesians and Colossians, Ephesians 6, 5 through 8, Colossians 3, 22 through 24, 1 Peter 2, 18, 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 2, it constantly talks about these, these, um, these roles of, of the slaves. And when you are working for someone, in, in essence, you are their slave. You are doing what, what they are telling you to do. Um, the only difference is you're doing, you're doing it for money. Um, so, government is the first basic structure of authority. We need to be careful about that. Um, and also, I would like to say this. It's, it's astounding how many people say it, talk bad about police officers, cops, or whatever. And then they expect their children to listen to them. The amount of people who tell their kids not to to, to tell them tell a marketer that they're not there. They're, oh, tell them I'm not home, and yet are surprised when their kids lie to them. So I mean, our kids model what they see in us. Um, but then business, um, our our boss, our manager. Uh, once again, oh, I don't listen to them. I, I listen to my head boss. Yes, but your head boss appointed those lower managers. I don't listen to man. I listen to God. Yes, but if you really listen to God, you would listen to man because God established the man. See what I mean? That authority structure. There, there's, there's, here's you. Whoever's over you directly. Who's ever over them? Who's ever over them? See what I mean? There, there's a structure there. Um, also, the the church. First uh, Thessalonians five twelve through thirteen. First Timothy five seventeen through eighteen. Hebrews 13, 17, and 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3 um, all talk about uh, um, how we should um, deal, with, um, deal with authority and whatnot. Um, uh, in, the, in the church. Um, and also, 1 Timothy does give us a warning, um, I think it's verse 19 and 20, it gives us a warning about um, believing things taken against um, elders with no basis to them. Okay, they need to be at least two or three witnesses. Um, but then also, uh, be careful of those who are not under anybody's authority. Uh, the house churches, who, you know, oh, we're just here to, you know, 
um, we have this nice little Bible study. We don't ever do anything. We don't ever um, witness. We don't ever disciple people. We just kind of hang here and, and tell each other what we think the Bible says. And then there's nobody over their structure, over, over them. Jim Jones, who was his own authority. What happened with that? A bunch of people ended up dead. So, I mean, whenever there's someone who doesn't submit to anybody's authority, it's a bad situation. And I think that sometimes... Um, some in government um, positions, like maybe the president or whatever, um, can fall in a place of thinking that he's not under anybody's authority. But the truth is that the president is under the authority of all of America. I mean, um, and then we also are, are in subjection to his authority. It's kind of a two-way street kind of thing. You know, we voted him in, you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> But anyways, my point being, whenever there, there's a lack of authority structure, there's an abuse of privilege. There's a uh, there's an abuse of, of what's going on. There's an abuse of the system um, on one side or the other. Either the pastor doesn't or, or leader whoever doesn't have enough power, or he has too much power, and there's nothing there to regulate him. Um, you know, the people who have fallen to fall into scandals and to um, sexual immorality and all kinds of different things because there's nobody placed in authority, nobody who they were accountable to. Um, and then family is another source. Um, Proverbs says over and over again about um, the influence that parents can have um, in, 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 the, in, in the life of a child. So let's read some of these passages. Romans 13, 1 through, um, 1 through 7. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But it knows that for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not uh, bear the sword for no reason. Let me kind of give a little bit of, uh, of point to this. Um, I stopped speeding a few years back. And ever since I stopped speeding, I noticed that I'm not constantly on the prowl for where the cops are so I don't get a ticket. Because I have no reason to look for, uh, to, be, to get a ticket. I'm not doing anything wrong. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment to the wrongdoer. Now, obviously, there are exceptions to this rule. And for instance, um, the uh, persecution under the Roman Empire, um, and then the eventual later uh, fuller persecution under the Roman Empire. Um, you know, and so obviously that is a thing. But obviously, um, I want to point this out. Always find what your what your authority's purpose is and what they're doing. Rome persecuted Christians because they thought it was going to cause disunity in the empire, and they thought that it was going to cause rebellion. So I mean, um, they did it to establish a firmer empire, to make things safer. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't the bad emperors that were persecuting the Christians. It was the, it was the good ones, the ones that, that wanted to um, to establish a, a stronger empire that wanted to make Rome safer, that kind of stuff. Um, Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. So then our, our con it'll, it'll give us a clear conscience, like Lesson A was talking about, but then also um, it'll prevent us from being punished. Now, obviously, once again, there are exceptions to this. Some people who are, are punished and, and whatnot. But for those situations, it's important to note that Christians are called. Christians are called to endure the persecution. Okay? Um... Now, uh, this doesn't have anything to do with being passive. This has nothing to do with um, not serving in military. This has nothing to do with um, not uh, standing up for those people who are being per who are who are being um, having their rights infringed upon. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when Christians are being persecuted for being Christian. This is uh, also why you pay taxes for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone who, what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So, First um, Peter 2, 13-14. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong um, and to commend those who do right. Um, let's see, 1 Peter 2.18. 
Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Um, 1 Timothy 6, 1-2. All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect, so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Those who who um those who have believing masters should not show them disrespect just because they are fellow believers. Instead, they should serve them even better because their masters are dear to them as fellow believers and are devoted to the welfare of their slaves. Um, so, uh, just just some things on on business. If you want more, Ephesians six five through eight and Colossians three twenty two through twenty four, and the church, First uh, Thessalonians. Um, 5, uh, 12-13. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And then Hebrews um, 13, uh, 17. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Um, for more on that, 1 Peter 5, 1 through 3. It, once again, if you are an authority, you have a responsibility. Um, fathers are not to um, um, discourage their children, um, nor to abuse their abuse their, their wives. Um, wives are not to make uh, decisions without their husbands. Um, Say and whatnot like that. Um, the father is the head of the household. The wife is is, is an equal a voice um, with him. Uh, the children are in subjection to them. There's that structure there. Um, and so then the family, Colossians three twenty, Ephesians Ephesians five twenty two through six four. I talked about these. Proverbs six. Let's talk about this one. Proverbs six. Once again, one of the verses that we skip over because we don't like it. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Even if you are married, listen to your parents' counsel. Um, even if you think that they're complete idiots, listen to their, to, to their counsel. They've lived a lot longer than you. Um, they may know what they're talking about. Um, bind them always in your heart, fasten them around your neck. And then in 15.5, uh, he goes on to say, A fool spurns a parent's discipline, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. Uh, 30.17 um, says, uh, The eye that mocks a father that scorns an aged mother will be pecked out by the ravens of the valley, will be eaten by the vultures. Um, so, um, those are the four basic structures of authority. There's, I obviously didn't read everything, uh, all the different verses. If you want more on that, go to my blog. It'll have the, the printout, which will have all the different um verses listed there. Uh, I'm just not going to read through all of them. Um, and, but here's the thing is whenever we, we have strict authority we always have this question of but what if? What if they do this or this or that or that? Someone else's wrong doesn't justify your wrong. Don't justify your sin. Okay? Let me give you an example. My parents, um, you know, um, um, talked to me rough or whatever and so I'm going to talk to them rough. Okay, that's once again condoning your stupidity by their stupidity. Okay, um, I'll give you another more serious one. Um, you were abused, uh, abused as a child, and then as you grow up, you resented whoever abused you, your mother, your father, or both, um, and uh, failed to learn the lesson from them. Okay, so what were they trying to teach you, and what can you what can you learn from their character? With that being established, what can you take away? Let's say they were trying to t teach you to be subject you know, be in subjection. Well, maybe they took that a little bit too far. See what I mean? <laughs> but does that mean that you should go to the other extreme and not live under anybody's authority? Well, no, not at all. See, that's an example of how we allow what our parents do to lead over and, 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 and lead us into a place of... of... It's like this, uh, in the financials lesson, I, I, was, I was talking about um, not letting... Um, and not, not 
what was I saying? Not allowing, um, not not being not being a victim. Here's the thing: even if you are a victim, if you give yourself the victim mentality, if you give yourself that victim mentality, you will never grow and mature past it. Even if you are the victim, okay. So what I'm talking about is letting that stuff go. Even if you are completely right, everybody else is wrong, and even if that's the thing. Still, you're doing it for your own sake to be lifted up. And it's the exact same thing um, with authority, um, which I think I already mentioned in the last lesson, but I just want to mention this again. Um, um, well, I think you get the point. Um, so what happens if I rebel? Your children lose an inheritance. Your ministry or witness will suffer. Um, and your children won't just lose an inheritance. They will. They will gain that bad attitude. They will react to it. Um, they will model and they will. They will um, um, copy what they have seen, but maybe with different actions. Um, your life will be shortened. You reject God's blessing and experience rocky paths. You, ra you raise yourself against God in pride. Your spiritual life begins to die. You lose your authority over others. I mean, there's just so many different long-term effects of rebellion. See, we think that we're just rebelling against someone who doesn't deserve that. But you don't you don't submit to somebody just because they deserve it. You submit to them because they are in authority, and um, that's the way it goes. Um, so when we come back next time, we'll talk about the pastor. I'm going to go ahead and stop here.